I just made a video about the trans 1,2-dichloroethene. So I thought I would make one about the cis verge isomer, just as a completion standpoint. So here's the cis 1,2-dichloroethene molecule, and I've made a model of this. Now, this point group is C2V. The symmetry of this one is a little different. And so let's look at how we determined the symmetry of this point group. So we'll have a rotational symmetry, and that is just like so. So the primary axis goes right through, and this time the axis is in the same plane as the molecule. It's in line with that. And so that's why we have a vertical plane of symmetry here and a vertical plane of symmetry here because it lines up with the rotational axis of, of the molecule. So that is the point group. This has the same symmetry as water, actually. So now let's look at determining the number of IR active modes for this particular molecule. So I've got the character table here, and let's go about counting up the number of atoms that stay in the same position for each operation. So for the identity operation, we'll have six that remain in the same location because we, we don't do anything to the molecule. Um, now, if we rotate the molecule on the C2 axis, just like so, all of the atoms have moved, so that is a zero. And if we have the XY, or the first plane of symmetry is the, generally this first one is the plane that contains most of the molecule. Right? And then as we go to the primes, we'll, we'll choose the one that has fewer atoms in that plane. So this is this plane of symmetry first. That has six atoms that don't move. And then we go to the other plane of symmetry, which is this one. And all of the atoms will move, so there's none that are stationary. Next, we move on to the contribution per atom. And for the identity operation, it's three. For C2, it's negative one. For reflection planes, it's one. We multiply these two together to get the reducible representation. 18, 0, 6, 0. And now we go through the process of reducing this representation. The order of this group is 4. So 18 times 1, uh, let's see here, 1 fourth, we'll start at the beginning, uh, times 18 times 1 times 1, but all of these are 1, so again, I'm going to be a little uh, lazy on that and kind of skip that step. Uh, plus 0 times other stuff uh, is going to be 0. 6 times 1 uh, plus 0. And this is going to be 6, right? 6 plus 18 is 24 divided by 4 is 6 A1s. And let's do the same thing for the rest of these representations. So we have three A2s.
six B1s and Now, while I'm writing this out, I should point out that it, although convention and, and a lot of people will make this uh, first sigma be the one that contains the most um, atoms within that plane, if you do it the other way, you will still get the same answer it, it, in terms of the number of IR active modes. And when you ultimately end up drawing the different IR active modes, it, it will come out the same. So it doesn't matter as much how where you put the, the two reflection planes. It is still usually helpful to put the Z axis as the in line with the primary um, axis of rotation but uh, the reflection planes, you, you can get away with, with assigning them differently. Uh, if you do that, you might end up with a slightly different answer than some other reference that you look up, uh, but the number of active modes will still be the same in all of the references that you're looking at. All right, so we've got this 6A1s, 3A2s, 6B1s, 3B2s. Next, we have to remove the translation and rotation modes from this. So if we do that, we'll lose 1A1, we'll lose 1A2, and we'll lose 2B1s, and we'll lose 2B2s. Now, there is an exception to this. If both of these were, say, in a parenthesis, then they would transform together and that would be only counted as one in that case. That happens in the, the threefold rotational symmetry groups, for example. And I already have a video on ammonia. All right, so if we subtract these out, we will be left with 5A1s, 2A2s, 4B1s, and 1B2. Now, not all of these are IR active. A2 is not IR active. And we can tell that because the only ones that are IR active are the ones that have the same symmetry as one of the coordinate axes. So A1 has the Z coordinate axis uh, symmetry. Uh, B1 has the X axis and B2 has the Y axis. A2 is just a rotation, doesn't count for IR active modes. So these are not IR active. So if we add up these, it's uh, one plus four plus five, that's 10 IR active bands. Now, in our other video, when we looked at the trans version of this, the trans isomer, you may recall that it only had six IR active bands. And this is one of the things that group theory can help us with. We can identify whether it would have uh, a fewer number of IR active bands or a greater number. And that can help us identify what molecule we're looking at based on just the number of bands that we see. I mean, there are other ways of identifying what you have, but this is a relatively simple way. And that is one of the utilities of using group theory to look at the number of uh, the IR active modes. And in some cases, you don't even need to look at the entire molecule. Um, in some 
metal complexes, you'll just look at how many carbon monoxide or CO stretching frequencies there are. It's a very strong peak, and you can use that sometimes to identify which isomer you have. And in those cases, there's a little different process of figuring it out, but it will help you to determine what isomer you have very quickly.